I want to complete. Okay, so I saw Kaba. The message that we have been looking at for some time. All right, well, I should say, I think Bayer will have to be our guardian saying, Who am I sent to? Tanya, you know, say, I don't see who am I sent to? Tanya, I don't see. This is the first three and the final part. I pack it, I feel part of it. What do you see? Nearly. If you don't know about the part one and part two, you can get the CD. See, we're back. One part is after a lack of quality. KJ, I don't have fun. I think we're going Who am I sent to? Tanya, I don't miss you. Please. Hey, Joe. We are going to a different dimension tonight. In Matthew chapter 21. Matthew 21. In Matthew We read an interesting episode there. Matthew chapter 21. I read from verse 1. And when they drew near unto Jerusalem, Jerusalem, and were come to Bethphage, unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples. Jesus specifically sent two of his disciples. He sent them to carry out a particular assignment. So those two disciples did not go on this mission by their own power. They were sent. And the one who sent them back them up with power and with authority. Just like I am sent to somebody here tonight. I am here back up with heavenly power and authority. That what is yours that somebody is holding on to by fire and by force they shall release them tonight in the name of Jesus Jesus sent two of his disciples what was the assignment verse 2 Say unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straight away you shall find an ass tied and a cart with her. You shall find a donkey tied. And also a cult. Both the mother and the and the daughter were tied. Lose them. And bring them unto me. They were tied down. Jesus sent the disciples. I'm giving you an assignment. There is a destiny that is tied down. There is a family that is tied down. There is a ministry that is tied down. Go there. Lose them. And bring them unto me. These two animals that were tied down did not enjoy themselves. They were tied down. 
I am here as a saint man to untie you tonight. Therefore, any satanic rope, any evil rope, that is tying down your destiny by the power that establishes ministry. I cut them up now. In the name of Jesus, I cut them off. 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 In the name of Jesus. There was no struggle at all to untie these two animals. Why? Because it was Jesus that sent them. Jesus sent them. Verse 3. And if any man say unto you, why are you doing what you are doing? The Lord have need of them. And straight away he will send them. Lord God, so if any man wants to resist you, I have given you the authority and the power to confront them. Therefore, I am here tonight with a special grace and special anointing. Any man or any woman that is resisting your freedom shall run mad. In the name of Jesus. Not only that, for these two animals were tied down in the village, not in the city. Jesus sent them to the village. There are powers in the village that tie people down there, and those that they tie down, they are in the city. Tonight, I decree into your life your village witchcraft power that is harassing your destiny shall be wasted. They shall be wasted. They shall be wasted in the name of Jesus. I beg you tonight, follow me with the same spirit and with the same anointing. Because tonight is a night of hot judgment. Anyone calling your name in your village for death shall die in your place. They shall die in your place. They shall die in your place. They shall die in your place. In the name of Jesus. I am here tonight to pronounce hot judgment against the works of Satan in your life. Before you leave here today, any evil arrangement to make you remain on one spot, I scatter that arrangement. I scatter it. 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 In the name of Jesus. If those donkeys were not tied down, there will be no need for Jesus to send his two disciples there. Have you no need? The sending of his disciples 
was provoked by the bondage that was in operation. Therefore, Anything that has followed you down to this place today has made a terrible mistake. And I command the fire of the God of Elijah to destroy them now. Let your amen roar like thunder. Physical rope was used to tie down these two donkeys. The mother and the child. They were tied down. Physical rope was used. But for so many people, it is a spiritual rope that is tying them down. Many appeared physically free. When you see them physically, they are beautiful. They are handsome. Good looking. Speak correct English. Some are even married. Some have good job. Some like good cars. Physically, they are okay. They are free. But when you check them up spiritually, they are in chains. They are in bondage. Your real identity is in the spirit realm not in the physical realm your real identity the real person that you are is not on the outside that we are seeing on the inside Jesus was called the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world physically it's a woman being but in the spirit is a lamb. So it was so easy for the Holy Spirit to come upon him. Because in the spirit, he was a lamb, not a goat. Your real identity is in the spirit realm. Forget about the titles. Forget about the position. Forget about the age. All those on there are just labels on the bottle. The real thing is on the inside. The question is, who are you in the realm of the spirit? A woman came and she told me what she experienced. She had a dream. And in that dream, she said somebody came to her and said, Madam, I want to pack my car. Say, pack your car now. Why are you telling me? Pack your car. She now said, the person said, well, I want to pack my car on your head. I said, eh? So, so what happened? She said, sir, I don't know how it happened. She packed his car on her head. And the strength was that she was able to carry the car. On her head. I laughed. And I told her, Madam, in the spirit realm, you have become a car pack. Your head has become a cap. Any evil image that is tied to your spirit man, I command that evil image to die in the name of 
Jesus. If somebody told that woman physically that you are a car park, she will get angry. She will not believe. But she saw it with her own eyes. Many appear physically free. But they are in chains in the realm of the spirit. Listen to me tonight. We are not here to deceive anybody. If your life is not moving towards your goals, it's not moving towards your target, it's not moving towards the, the good dream that you have for your life. Then something is wrong in the realm of the spirit. Something is definitely wrong. If your potentials are not finding expression, then something is wrong in the realm of the spirit. If your life is not manifesting the glory and the power of Christ. Of course, something is definitely wrong in the realm of the Spirit. If your confession as a Christian does not translate into authority and dominion, then something is wrong in the realm of the spirit. And for things to change physically, it must first change in the realm of the spirit. If what God said you should dominate is not dominating you. And not the one controlling you. Then something is wrong in the realm of the spirit. If your prayer and your fasting does not produce outstanding wonders like men and women in the Bible days. Then something is wrong somewhere in the realm of the spirit. If the devil does not respect the name of Jesus in your mouth, like that woman that was praying in the city room, upstairs, okay. She was praying. Praying. Then she noticed that she was hearing some strange noise. So she opened her window and looked through the window. And then she saw some goats. Some goats. It's like they form a circle. And those strange noises were coming from that circle. She got angry and she pointed at the goat. So I command you, goat, in the name of Jesus, receive fire. And one of the goats looked up and laughed and spoke in Yoruba language. Everybody is commanding in the name of Jesus. You too, you are commanding in the name of Jesus. You better shut up there. They spoke back to her in Yoruba language. Just like that rat that spoke back to me. Say, Oro, Oro, Oro. They spoke back to that lady. When she had good speaking pure Yoruba language. And, and the, the goats mentioned the name of Jesus back to her. Nobody advised her to run away. She quickly closed the door and ran back to the house. 
Something is wrong with her in the realm of the spirit. The name of Jesus Christ in her mouth does not command respect. I am here tonight as a saint man to correct what is wrong with you in the realm of the spirit. Therefore, if your amen can roar like thunder three times, I speak into your life now. Every error in your life that is manifesting in the realm of the spirit. I command them to be corrected now. At this junction, we need to ask ourselves a very important question. The question is this. Why were those donkeys tied down? You see, there is no useless information in the Bible. Someone who read the Bible and who study the Bible want to find out why were they tied down. Then why in the village, not in the city? The answer is there in the Bible. It is because these two donkeys, they were product of divine prophecies. It was prophecies that produces them. They carry divine prophecies upon their life. Look at that Matthew 21 again, verse, verse 4. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye daughters of Zion, behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek and sitting upon an ass, and a coat, the foal of an ass. So they were not just ordinary donkeys. They were product of divine prophecies. When you read Zechariah chapter 9 verse 9, there was a prophecy. A prophecy. That a time is coming that two donkeys shall release themselves and they shall serve Jesus. So they were not just ordinary donkeys. There were so many donkeys in Jerusalem. Nobody attacked them. Nobody arrested them. They were just moving freely because they carry nothing. But these particular donkeys, the enemy located them, saw what they carried in the realm of the spirit, and then decided to attack them. They were product of divine prophecies. So the enemy went after them, attacked them, and then tied them down because of what they carried. But when Jesus appeared, Jesus sent two of his disciples. Don't go to any donkeys. Go to these two particular donkeys that are been attacked by the enemy. Go there and lose them. Divine prophecy upon your life will make the enemy to launch serious attack against you. 
If the devil is not attacking you, then he should get you seriously worried. If the devil is not attacking you, two things may be responsible. Maybe number one, he has already captured you. You are already inside his cage. So there is no need for him to be wasting his bullets on you. If the devil is not attacking you, number two reason, maybe there is nothing in you worthy to fight or to contend for. That is, the enemy has extrayed you. Spiritually speaking, the person is empty. So, why should I be fighting this one? It does not carry anything that will be of a threat to my kingdom. But if the devil is attacking you, rejoice! It means that you carry something. If the devil is running after you, it means that there is a prophecy upon your life that he is afraid of. And he does not want that prophecy to come to pass. But I say this loud and clear tonight. The devil is a liar. What God has pronounced upon your life, whether the enemy likes it or not, they shall come to pass. Divine prophecy confuses the enemy. It confuses the enemy. I came across an article and which was very revealing. The article says the greatest problem to overcome in life is fear. The most effective sleeping pill is peace of mind. The most powerful force in life is love. The most dangerous act is gossip. The most satisfying work is helping others. It says the greatest loss is loss of self-respect. The article continues. It says the most destructive habit is worry. The most Incredible computer is the brain of man. The greatest asset is faith. The most beautiful attire that a man can put on is a smile. The most worthless emotion is self. Pity. The most deadliest weapon is the tongue of man. It says the two most powerful filled words is I can, I can. It says the ugliest personality trait is selfishness. 
The most prized possession is integrity. The most powerful channel of communication is prayer. He now said, the most powerful product from heaven that confuses the enemy is prophecies. That is when prophecies are released into a person's life. What it does to the enemy is to confuse them. I prophesy into your life now that where your parents could not reach in life, you will get there by fire. In the name of Jesus. So the reason why the enemy attacked those two donkeys is just because they carry divine prophecy. What is prophecy? It is a message inspired by God to be delivered to the people or to a place. Prophecy is history in advance. Prophecy is the mind of God expressed in words. Prophecy is God calling those things which be not as though they were. God looked at Abraham. I said, you are a father of many nations. No pregnancy. No child, no children. Old. Calling those things which be not as though they were. Therefore, I'm seeing somebody here now. It's a brother. And it's a sister. Before the end of this year, your name shall be celebrated in this country. In the name of Jesus. God calling those things weak be not as though they are. That is prophecy. Prophecy is God using the mouth of his servants to say what should be what should be if you don't have a car here receive your car in the name of Jesus if you don't have a landed property here receive your own in the name of Jesus Don't joke with it. Don't joke with it. Don't joke with it. God calls those things which be not as though they are. If you are in this meeting tonight and you have never shared an outstanding testimony in your life before, before the end of this year, you will share a glorious testimony. In the name of Jesus. The Lord is showing me someone in the spirit realm. Right now. It's like you are begging. It's like you are begging. You beg for things. You beg for that. You beg for this. You beg for that. But because you are here tonight. Tonight is your night. 
your story is changing. It's 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 changing. In the name of Jesus. How it will happen is not my own headache. It is not me that will bring it to pass. It is God who called those things which be not as though they are. I say again into your life before the end of this year your mouth shall share powerful testimonies. Receive it. 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 In the name of Jesus. What is prophecy? Prophecy is enforcing the will of God. Upon the physical realm. That is, you are saying, let your will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Prophecy is always talking about the future. Tomorrow. The future. Tomorrow. That is the power of God, the Spirit of God talking to your tomorrow. Every man here, I say unto you, your tomorrow shall be glorious. Every woman here tonight, I say unto you, your tomorrow shall be glorious. Everyone hearing the sound of my voice, I speak into your tomorrow. Your tomorrow shall be glorious. Prophecy addresses the future. The whole Bible is called the book of prophecy. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 2. Second Peter chapter 1, verses 20 and 21. The whole Bible is called the book of prophets. When you look at Jesus, Jesus' life is a fulfillment of prophecies. His life can be divided into three parts. His birth, his death, his death, is resurrection. All these three departments of Jesus' life, they were all products of divine prophecy. His back was prophesied. His death was prophesied. His resurrection was prophesied. So Jesus lived his life in fulfillment of divine prophecies. Hear this blunt truth tonight. Everyone born of a woman is a product of prophecy. And you must know this fact very well tonight. That your life is consciously or unconsciously following prophecies. The life that you are living now is following a particular prophecy. Consciously or unconsciously, there are 
positive prophecies. And there are negative prophecies. For example, the Bible says, because iniquity shall abound. The love of many shall wax cold. It is a prophecy. But a negative prophecy. This is where you and I need to pray seriously. We need to pray seriously for ourselves. You must pray with holy anger for yourself. That your life will not fulfill negative prophecies. Judas is carried. God lost in destiny. Because his life fulfilled negative prophecy. There was a prophecy that was released. That says, Let his days be few, and let another take his office. A negative prophecy. Unfortunately, Judas Carriot unconsciously aligned himself with this negative prophecy. It manifested in his life. His head carried it. His destiny carried it. He now fulfilled it. Even though they sat under Jesus, the man without, the man that has anointing without measure. But he allowed negative prophecy to come to pass upon his own life. Maybe if Judas I pray this kind of prayer that you are going to pray now. His head will have rejected that negative prophecy. I'm praying for somebody here tonight. You. Every negative prophecy that is hanging upon your life by the power and the blood of Jesus, I cancel them now. They are cancelled. They are cancelled. They are cancelled. They are cancelled. In the name of Jesus. But when your life carry divine prophecy, you become a delight of heaven. At the same time, the whole of hellfire will rise up against you. They will fight you. But our confidence is this. Divine prophecy confuses the enemy. They will hear it. They will see it. But they will not understand how it will come to pass. Because the outworking of it is God. Remember, when God pronounced that prophecy upon the serpent, He said, He shall break your head. The, the seed of the woman shall break your head. The devil had that prophecy. He saw it. But he didn't understand how that prophecy will actually come to pass. When God was saying it, he was there. But he didn't know the outworking of it. He didn't know that the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ will eventually destroy this kingdom completely. Because 
He didn't know from a, that the beating of Jesus, nailing him to the cross, and bury him inside the grave, is actually prophecy being fulfilled in order to break the head of the serpent. That was why Paul said, if they had known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. They had the prophecy, they saw it, but they didn't understand how it will come to pass. Divine prophecies confuses the enemy. Today, your life will announce confusion into the camp of the enemy. In the name of Jesus. We are getting ready to pray now. God sent prophet Samuel to Saul to release eight prophecies upon his destiny. And all of them came to pass. All. Not one missed out. David through the power of prophecy brought down Goliath. When the man was standing, he spoke to him. He said, Today, the Lord will deliver you into my hand. Say, Today, I will smite you. Today, I will cut off your head. Today, I will feed you to the best of the air and to the wild beasts. And all that prophecies some fulfillment. Your Goliath, Goliath shall die without repair. Jesus, Jesus rule through the power of prophecy. He said, destroy this temple. And in three days, I will raise it up. As a saint man, I carry the power and the anointing of prophecy tonight. Whatever that is released into your destiny will surely come to pass in the name of Jesus. The power of prophecy in the mouth of a saint man can turn your life around to the glory of God. There is, there is somebody in this meeting tonight. You will never cry again. In the name of Jesus. How do you provoke divine prophecies? Three ways. Number one, through faith. Number two, through obedience. And number three, through the voice of the Lord. Faith, obedience, the voice of the Lord. There are three particular prophecies that the Lord himself gave to me to release upon his children tonight. Just three. And those of us that have diary write today's date down and write these prophecies down. Because within a very short period, they shall manifest in your life. 
who am I sent to? If you are among those that I am sent to tonight, don't run home. Oh. Make sure that these three prophecies you receive them by fire. You embrace them by faith. Because surely no devil from the pit of hell can stop him from manifesting. You will dance your dance. And you will sing your song. I said you will dance your dance. And then you will sing your song. You are not dancing. I said you will dance your dance. And then you will sing your song. You are sitting down. You are not dancing. You will dance your dance. And then you will sing your song. Don't joke with it. I said you will dance your dance. And then you will sing your song. A three powerful amen. Bring out your tithe and your offering now. Thank you, Jesus. You know, Elisha said, Elisha, we go. By this time tomorrow, there shall be plenty in the land. When he was saying it, it looks very impossible. So impossible that one man who could not control his tongue decided to say, Ah, ah. If God should open the windows of heaven, what you have just said now can never be. What an insult. And the man of God looked at him straight in the eye and said, You will see it. But you will not partake out of it. It is that same pronouncement. By this time tomorrow. It is on the platform of that statement. That these three prophecies shall be released. Let your amen be thunderous. Three powerful amen. Don't allow the voice of your neighbor to drown your own voice. By the power in the name of Jesus. I speak into your life by the spirit of prophecy. By this time tomorrow. No sickness shall be found inside your body. I speak again by the spirit of prophecy that by this time tomorrow the power behind your stubborn problem shall be disgraced.
in the name of Jesus. And this is the third one, which will require a sevenfold amen. I speak into your life by the spirit of prophecy. That by this time tomorrow, your God will decorate your life. With expected and unexpected wonders. Another seven fold amen. When you get home tonight, dance your dance and sing your song. All these three prophecies that you have just said amen to now, they will surely come to pass.